Organic superconductivity was first theorized in 1964 by Bill Little at Stanford, proposing two-dimensional excitonic interaction between electrons. Let us have a look at oversimplified model of the polymer chain constructed from the central rod and the branches attached to it. The central conductive cord has a carbon-carbon single bonds, which were separated by double carbon bonds, enabling electrons to behave like in metal. The branches are easily polarized between nitrogen atoms, so the first electron polarizes the branches due to the Coulomb interaction, and the positive charges emerge in the branches. These very positive charges attract the second electron, and this is how the electron-electron interaction is envisaged. One may conclude that there is a close analog to the Cooper pairs interaction, but the main difference is there is no phonon involved. These differences has potentially a serious consequences on a predicted value of the critical temperature. If one considers the differences in mass between electron and atom, the critical temperature could be as high as 1000 Celsius. Obviously, the compound will melt at this temperature, but maybe superconductivity at room temperature is possible. In 1981, Beckard synthesized the first organic superconductor. If both the donor and the acceptor contain carbon, I believe that they should be organic superconductors. When the acceptor is metallic, we would call that one metallo-organic. Intercalation uh, gave us good results. Uh, it raised the superconducting transition temperature of a metal tantalum disulfide to 5 Kelvin. However, we could not go above that. We tried several compounds, both inorganic, like hydrogen, ammonia, hydrazine, and a lot of organic materials. There was a cap on the transition temperature that we could obtain. And there we thought, well, we have reached the limit until we started seeing distortions on electron diffraction. This apparently was holding us back. Once the two-dimensional layers are free to do as they please, they will align to lower their energy. And if this gives us a distortion, there is no superconductivity. The idea for an organic metal is that the pi electron clouds in the two molecules can interact, are in the geometrical position that can interact. We have a tetraphia, uh, give rise to a pi electron cloud. Again, a pi electron cloud. The pi electron clouds are such that the molecules can interact with each other and amongst themselves. And what has happened most of the time is that we will have layers of the donor and layers of the acceptor by so mixing the two compounds together in solution in the laboratory. Now, the donor will become positively charged, the acceptor will become negatively charged. Now, if the anion is too large or too small, it may not uh, produce the delocalized electron orbital that I need to have conduction. The way the electrons overlap to carry current, this is something the organic chemist has a tremendous feeling for the delocalized pi electrons interacting with another set of delocalized pi electrons to form a complex, not too strong to form a diatomic molecule, but sufficient to stay away. When a donor interacts with an acceptor, they stay at a certain distance, but they form a solid. We're talking about charge transfer and overdoping and underdoping meaning that the metal layer will get less or more electrons in the conduction band. But this is a definition. Now, when I go to a, a charge transfer complex, be it organic or cuprate, I can control that by the molecule, by its ionization potential. Optimum uh, charge transfer will give the best superconducting transition. This varies from material to material, be it cuprate, organic superconductor. Now the charge transfer can be induced by pressure in both cuprate and organic superconductor. The influence of pressure on an organic superconductor is to bring some atoms together and that may increase 
the overlap and therefore the extension of the delocalized electron, but it may elongate others according to the anisotropy of the material. So the pressure can be beneficial and it can be bad as well. Donor in this case is very important because it has been used to prepare the highest temperature uh, organic superconductors. But its name is a full mouth and we have abbreviated it to ET because it was discovered at the time that the extraterrestrial movie was obtained or showing. So we start out with the prefix bis because we repeat both sides. S Ethylene right here, di phi or lo, these two sulfurs, tetra phi a full va lin. The bis represents that two sides of the molecule are identical. This side is a mirror image of that side. Uh, the ethylene dithiolo, ethylene is this group here. The dithiolo is this group here. And the tetrathiafolvalene is the blue part that we started with. That's it. But we call it ET from now on. The lifetime of an organic compound is limited by its environment. So if it's in an oxygen or humid atmosphere, chances are that it will deteriorate. But the same thing happens to YBCO. What students in chemistry should be doing if they want to do uh, organic chemistry superconductors is to see first of all what has gone before, that is prolog. Then look for the match between two molecules where their electrons will overlap in the structure. 